And welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Iron Torch 20, and we are uh, starting off with uh, my next Let's Play, and that's going to be Darkwing Duck for the NES. Um, I did take some time off just because of, uh, you know, school and whatnot. I mean, that just uh, took first priority. And also, as far as uh, a good comeback LP, I think this is actually a good choice. This because I did want to continue more of that Disney Capcom stuff I had uh, going before that with DuckTales 2. As well as, uh, let's see, I think it was... Nah, actually, I think that was it. Ah, well, screw it, let's just continue this. Um, I do love this uh, particular opening. And then also uh, shows everything, as well as the uh, nice NES rendition of the Darkwing Duck theme. And we are going to uh, talk more about this as the uh, game goes on. Uh, fun fact about this game, uh, see, the first time I did hear about it was, um, during, uh, Nintendo Power. And then, uh, when I first subscribed to Nintendo Power, this was actually the cover of the first issue I got. So that's just a nice little nostalgia moment for me. Just because I did enjoy, uh, reading about this whole magazine and everything that was going on with it. So either way, as you can see, you get a, a state select screen here. And then, um, you do get three in the first half of the game, three in the second half of the game, and then, uh, you get one final stage after that. So it's a pretty simple, uh, procedure. And then you can, uh, go over them, and then Launchpad will give you a quick little briefing on, uh, what's going on in each mission. But for the purposes of this, uh, LP, we'll just go with the, uh, easiest one first. And that's where we gotta take on Quacker Jack at the bridge. To, um, I think St. Canard, I think that's where this place, or where this game takes place, or where this cartoon takes place. Either way, I actually am not all that familiar with the cartoon, I just know the, uh, catchy theme, and also that launch pad is, uh, in this game. But either way, the, uh, controls are pretty simple, it's a running gun game a lot like Mega Man, except there are a few differences, though. Uh, the biggest one being that, um, you cannot jump or shoot and run at the same time. I mean, you can jump and shoot, and then also you can block with your cape. That's, uh, good for blocking projectiles. And then, of course, you can duck. It took until X5 before they can finally duck. But either way, one thing to, uh, note with the, uh, controls is that, uh, there's kind of a small hitch between when you land and when you, uh, start running again. I mean, it is a little bit noticeable, but really not that big a deal, but you will get used to it. So if you, uh, hit pause, uh, you can see the menu screen, and then that's the number of lives, the, uh, particular power-ups you have for your gun. And what I just picked up was the, uh, thunder gas, and you can, uh, switch to that by hitting select. And then, of course, uh, in this game, there's gonna be a lot of switches you do have to grapple on, as well as, uh, hooks and ledges. And this is a simple small power-up for gas, and then that gives you, I think, one extra unit. And then... I think each, uh, shot uses two of them, but I think the heavy gas uses three. But either way, uh, this game does, uh, get you acclimated to the controls pretty quickly, and one of the things you can do is, uh, just pick up an extra life. And then, this is a good introductory stage, just because it introduces you to everything right away. And then, of course, uh, just your usual NES scrolling here, no big deal. But either way, I did, uh, choose this game for a comeback LP just because of, uh, I do like the, uh, simpleness in the game, and also it, uh, does kind of, uh, or it is a, uh, I don't know, it's just a good game. And one thing I do like about the Thunder Gas is it's, uh, pretty useful for, uh, taking out enemies that, uh, that are above you. And then let's just go ahead and make this. And see, I did, uh, want to go here because of, uh, this thing. Yeah, so if you, uh, shoot the right spots, uh, you can find a bonus stage. And then this one's actually a lot different than the other ones, but what we gotta do here is just, uh, grapple on these hooks, and then hit stuff with our cape. Yeah, it's kind of weird. And then this one, uh, you probably will do that, um, pretty often. This because that's just the way this game goes. So either way, uh, I do like the, uh, level design in this game. They do, uh, combine things like using switches, using hooks, and using stuff you have to grapple onto a lot more. And then, um, instead of introducing new gimmicks, uh, they kind of do a good job just, uh, taking the same gimmicks and then, uh, doing different things with them. 
Which is one thing I do kind of like about it. And then up there is the uh, heavy gas, and you know what, I probably will go ahead and show that off. Just as soon as I'm done dealing with this guy. And just go ahead and take that. And every time you do pick up a, a new unit, or a new power-up for your gas gun, you do um, get 10 more gas units to uh, work with. And then what I'm doing now is just uh, blocking and countering here. I mean, pretty simple stuff. But the game does a pretty good job of uh, using that in different ways. And while we're here, I might as well show off what the uh, heavy gas does. And what you do is it uh, shoots a cloud. And that's actually a pretty useful thing for ground enemies. And this is a game where you do want to uh, pick up uh, power-ups just because uh, they do give you extra lives too. Or I think um, the right amount of points does give you extra lives. So just go ahead and take care of this guy and then go to the boss. And really what Quacker Jack's gonna do is he's just gonna run around and then uh, this other, or his helper is just gonna throw banana peels at you. And since this is a cartoon, banana peels are always very deadly. So, um, yeah, I mean, this boss is uh, actually really simple. But really it's just a matter of uh, just staying patient with him, tracking him down, and not getting too frustrated when he jumps uh, away from you. He actually doesn't really attack you on his own, so, I mean, that's just uh, something to know. And what I'm doing to a jump down is I'm ducking down and then uh, hitting the jump button. I mean, it's just a simple way to uh, just drop off from a ledge. And we are going to have to do that a few times. But either way, uh, that was simple enough. And that's the end of stage one. Uh, you can do the stages in any order you want. It uh, doesn't really matter. You don't get much of an advantage doing certain stages before others. But then again, you can also get good power-ups if you uh, do certain stages in a certain order. Alrighty, now that we're done with that, uh, we have our option to either go to the sewers or to the middle of the city. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, take on Wolf Duck. And I think Wolf Duck is the only one, but everybody else is a villain in the uh, particular cartoon. I mean, we had Quacker Jack, uh, the Liquidator does occupy the sewers, and then we get Megavolt later on, as well as a Moliarty and Bushroot. And also, I should mention how underrated the soundtrack is in this game. Yeah, I was waiting for you. And then this in particular is actually one of my favorite tracks. And bonus stage. So this one's a little bit different and actually a lot easier. All you have to do is uh, blast the containers. And then just go ahead and uh, keep going with this. And this is a really good way to uh, rack up on power-ups. It's just by going to the bonus stages and then getting them done. But then, uh, of course, you can only do one at a t or one stage per uh, or one bonus stage per stage. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so that's uh, really all we're doing. Oh, I got two lives out of that. So let's see, where are we now? All right, well, we got seven lives to work with. Um, the game actually like, does get really hard later on and. Let's see, also it is really easy to just burn through a lot of lives in short order. So let's... Nah, I just mistimed that. Yeah, there's kind of a short delay between when he uh, pops up and when he actually shoots you. So either way, um, navigating the tires is actually a little bit easier here compared to other games. So either way, I should uh, probably talk about a few other things outside of this. This is why as I decide to do things like my immediate reactions to uh, those Samurai Jack episodes, and one of the reasons for it was to uh, revive my channel, kind of. I mean, I did end up getting two new subs out of the deal, so I mean, there's that. Let's see, just gotta make that jump here. Yeah, unfortunately, this is a cartoon, so hitting the banana peels is always a bad thing. And you do get stunned, and that's uh, plenty of time for those flamethrower guys to shoot you. But either way, uh, that is one thing I did like about the uh, Darkwing Duck cartoon is that it did, uh, it was a little bit darker, but at least it acknowledged it was a cartoon. I mean, uh, 
You know what, I think I want to stick with this. Let's see, can I make this? Okay, good. And then all we gotta do is just run across this thing. Fortunately, running across this thing is actually pretty easy. I mean, compared to other games where they have the, uh... Or you have to, like, run with the tire in order to uh, not fall off. Or something like that. This guy's actually a pretty interesting enemy. Um, you just have to uh, wait for him to throw a shell at you and then just hit him. And then they also have kind of those Mega Man-ish concepts, too. But I should uh, also mention the uh, Happy Video Game Nerd review of this, and he was uh, pretty spot on with most of his uh, assessments and criticisms. Cause I mean, uh, he did understand the uh, low recovery time between hits as well as the... Uh... No, I mean, just how the uh, controls are a little bit different. But anyway, the uh, reason I wanted to hang on to the uh, aero gas was so I could uh, do this. Just as soon as I can get the distance right here. Uh, I can't make this, can I? Nope. Okay, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, with the uh, arrow gas, you can use it as a platform, and it is actually the same as the uh, Super Arrow in Mega Man 5, which, of course, shouldn't surprise anybody since this was also a Capcom game. But either way, I actually found the uh, arrow gun a little bit more useful towards uh, navigating past the stages and then getting the uh, secrets. Because this is a game that does reward you for exploring. And then let's just go ahead and take care of this guy. Um, the pacing in this game can be kind of slow depending on how you want to play it. But since you only do get four hits, uh, it's uh, a little bit easier just to uh, play more defensively. Which is why you're going to run into these occasional slowdowns in the... Uh, or just in the action. So you know what, I think I want to just stick down there. Okay, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. And then let's just go ahead and get more stuff just because we can. Uh, these guys are a little bit tricky just because uh, they do duck if you uh, try to shoot them straight. So, I mean, you kind of do have to like jump and shoot them. Let's see, and then here's the uh, boss, and then with Wolf Duck, what you want to do is you want to shoot him when he's running around like that. And then, uh, the game will show you, uh, just when, uh, he's gonna change and when he's gonna change back. Yeah, it's easy to, uh, tell just by the, uh, clouds, which I think is a pretty nice touch on the, uh, game designer's part. And then this guy can be, uh, pretty easy, or he can be pretty tricky depending on what he does, like when he jumps. And then when he does that. But fortunately, if you uh, pump him with enough lid, or with enough shots, uh, when he's uh, just running around like that, it's really not that big a deal. I see we got ourselves another extra life, so that's always good. Alright, and uh, with that said, I will see you next time for the uh, sewers.